Yo, what's going on everyone? We have a problem with the winter build. Now this is the film room. If you're not familiar with this, it's pretty uh, bare right now and everything's kind of cleaned and tucked away because we're not doing anything too extensive right now project-wise. We're getting ready for Computex. I'll be traveling to Switzerland in a few days. I'm excited about that. I get to see my wife finally after two months of being apart. Uh, but we have an issue. In this video, this is the winter build version 2. I put it together in this card right here. I invite you to check it out if you haven't seen that before watching this video. Uh, but the coolant in here is just really causing problems. Now, to be more specific, do you see the transparent fluid in there, right? Especially on that top port of the CPU block. That shouldn't be transparent. In fact, this entire build was using opaque coolant. It was an opaque white additive that I added to uh, distilled and treated water. I'll show you guys all that. And I'll just show you some B-roll as well so you can see what it looked like beforehand. Uh, and then obviously what it looks like now is totally different. The coolant looks like it's completely transparent. The opaque particles have basically dissolved out of solution and I guess are sticking to the walls of the PETG tubing. Maybe there's a ton of it in the radiator. I hope not. That's going to be a pain to get out. Uh, and then you can see also, especially at the bottom of the reservoir, again, it's transparent. You couldn't see that little uh, Primocho logo. I guess it's like a fluid separator. It keeps things from getting too turbulent uh, in there. That is something you couldn't see before. You can see it now because, again, the fluid is transparent. So we're going to take down this, this whole build. We're going to tear it apart. I'm going to try to get to the bottom of why this happened and uh, show you guys just you know how big a pain it is to maintain a custom loop with opaque coolant to begin with. Show you a few more clips, especially with the PC turned on. You'll see it better in the uh, in the extra light that we have with the LED strips in the case. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely stuck to the tubing. Uh, and when we turn it on, which I'll go ahead and do now, you'll see that it remains stuck to the PETG and is not you know super fluid. Uh, so that's an issue. That's buildup. And if it's happening in the in the tubing, then it's definitely happening elsewhere. My biggest concern. Uh, again, it's probably the radiator just because it's difficult to clean that. But you can see it's also kind of caked up in the CPU block. And this is a nickel ca uh, nickel plated block, excuse me. Uh, so, you know, nickel's very unreactive. Uh, and so we shouldn't be seeing this as a result of any sort of uh, galvanic corrosion. Uh, I do believe this is just the the particles, right? The opaque particles in the, the fluid additive um, that are falling out of solution and sticking to especially fine channels in the block. Uh, as well as in the radiator. You can see here's a side shot of the reservoir and same story. The dissolved solids are no longer dissolved. They've fallen out of solution and are sticking to the inside walls of the reservoir. I cannot wait to tear that radiator apart and see just how nasty and gunked up it is in those channels. So this right here is Primo Chill True. It's an opaque coolant concentration mix and you would apply essentially this entire bottle to approximately one gallon of deionized water. I didn't use all of it because I don't have a full gallon worth of fluid in my loop. In fact, I probably added a little less than I needed to um, given you know the, the size of this system. I didn't want it to be too thick, right? Because then you increase your odds exponentially uh, of this stuff you know, this crap here gunking up your system. So unless you want to do maintenance every two weeks, which I, <laughs> that would be a serious pain, uh, don't add too much of this stuff. You just, you don't want to do that. Um, you know, they recommend, I think this is eight ounces. Is it add true eight ounce coolant mix? Yeah, so it's a full eight ounce bottle here to an entire gallon of deionized water. Uh, you know, use this at your own risk. All this stuff really, not just from Primo Chill, but any opaque coolant additive uh, is going to, dramatically increase the odds of having something like this go wrong with your beautiful custom loop that you've worked so hard on. All right, so now we're gonna turn this PC off and tear the entire thing down, clean the CPU block, clean the radiator. It's gonna be a depressing and long job for sure, but it needs to be done because this shouldn't be operating as is, especially with that CPU block looking pretty clogged in there. Uh, worried about CPU temps in the long run. And uh, I don't even know what it's been doing to the fittings, if any of that coolant, you know, that, that additive stuff has been gunking up the fittings and reducing pressure, that hold that it has on each of the PETG tubes. Uh, you know, you just never know with this kind of stuff. So it's best just to tear it all down uh, and learn from your mistakes, I guess. I, you know, I, I figured I did this correctly, but... Uh, that's what you get for going with opaque stuff. You know, the guys that are always like, you know, only go with distilled water. That's the best way to do it. It's the only way to do it. I mean, they're kind of right, right? Because it's low maintenance. Water itself is not going to corrode anything unless you put something else in it to accelerate that corrosion. As long as you're using, you know, metals that are supposed to be used together. And in this case, we just have a premature rad, which is, a, I believe, a copper rad. And then a nickel-plated CPU block. Nickel and copper aren't going to react 
anywhere near this fast. Uh, so this is not galvanic corrosion. I do believe this is just an issue with the opaque additive. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the CPU block. Now this is torn down and washed, but I haven't actually taken it apart yet and cleaned out uh, inside those fins. So all of these uh, deposits in here are basically caked in. And uh, these are actually solid deposits that are blocking these channels here. And the channels are important because it increases surface area. It allows the fluid in the loop to transfer heat away from the CPU block. So this is not good. This is actually really nasty. Uh, and this is actually gonna be a pain to clean out as well. Might have to use vinegar or something along those lines uh, to get this stuff that's baked in uh, out of it again. And there it is in all its glory. That is just gross. You can actually see which direction the fluid traveled uh, because you have uh, like particle buildup on one side and then just where the fluid stained those channels on the other. And here's the top half of the CPU block. This is just a, an acrylic top and it is pretty gross here as well. You can actually see individual channels of where this fluid stained uh, the acrylic. It's, it's really gross. Uh, and this is definitely not, not good in the long run. All right, now the second thing to check out is the tubing and I pulled this one. This is one of the runs that uh, connects to the CPU block and this thing is just so dirty. I'm gonna show you a few shots here uh, of it from different angles. I can't find any place on this run in particular that is perfectly clear. Whatever it is that these little solids that fell out of solution have basically coated the inside walls of the tubing uh, with this run in particular and it is just, it's so bad. I <laughs> there's there's seriously no place on this tube where it's not just covered with this the white powder. Well, okay, I take it back. Right here, this is actually a, a basically 90 degree bend, and uh, you can see kind of how fluid flows. So there's less resistance on the inside wall of the tubing here uh, because the fluid has a tendency right to to travel in a straight line. Uh, so all of the particles were forced onto the outside, which is why the outside is. Sorry about the camera autofocus. The outside is mostly coated, uh, but the inside really isn't. So it's kind of cool to see, you know, fluid motion, fluid dynamics in action, part of what I studied in college. Uh, but yeah, so this is probably the only clear part of this entire bend, and it's pretty sad. And basically same story here with the reservoir. Again, pretty foggy, uh, a lot of deposits on the inside walls. I actually found a way to clean this though. I cleaned one of the, the tubing runs, and I'll show you guys how I did that if you want to recycle these, uh, should you run into a problem similar to this one. Uh, but I will need some feedback though, because I'm not sure how exactly this reacts with the PETG. So uh, you see it now, it's pretty dirty, and we're going to snap our fingers, and here's the tube now. 
Now, you see, pretty much uh, spotless, and it's because I use vinegar. Now, I don't have white vinegar. I'd recommend that because it's not colored, uh, but I only had red vinegar on hand, or red wine vinegar to be specific. So it's a little unorthodox, but it does clean the inside of the PETG tubing very well. I'm just not sure about corrosion, if the vinegar actually eats into the PETG at all. It doesn't look like it's reactive, uh, but I'm going to defer to you guys down below if you're, I don't know, a chemist or something along those lines, if you think that it reacts. Uh, be sure to let me know because I don't want to recommend something that would destroy PETG in the long run uh, or acrylic. Uh, so yeah, looking pretty clean thus far. I'm going to go ahead and treat the radiator now to the vinegar test as well. Uh, now that's going to be perfectly fine. There's just copper in there that won't react with vinegar. And uh, we're going to see how much sludge we have in that rad because I think it's going to be pretty bad. Look, the tubing was bad. The rad's going to be pretty disgusting. All right, and here is the last piece of the radiator. This is going to be more than likely the worst one to clean. And that's why I have red wine vinegar on hand. Again, I recommend white vinegar, but uh, any kind of acid solution uh, should work pretty fine with this as long as it doesn't react with the copper inside. We really need to clean these channels. I'm sure they are just super gunked up right now. Uh, and I've drained all the fluid that I possibly can from this. So anything excess that comes out is just gunked up and stuck in there. Uh, so hopefully the vinegar loosens it up. All right, so you guys saw how disgusting that radiator was and uh, took quite a bit of flushing with that red wine vinegar. I don't recommend again using that, but uh, it did definitely clean this rat out. It smells nice and clean inside. Uh, and this is something I recommend doing before you ever throw a radiator into a custom loop. Up front, you wanna wash it, flush it with vinegar, uh, even soap and water if that's all you got. Uh, just make sure you flush it at least once or twice uh, because most of the time these will have some gunk, some metal deposits left in there from when the rads were manufactured. You wanna get that out before you throw it into a custom loop because then it'll cycle through the rest of the components in the loop and could potentially clog things up. So what should you take from this video? The fact that opaque coolants or opaque mixes are risky. They're gonna require a lot of maintenance. Look, just one month in my system and I already had tubing that was stained. My radiator was extremely clogged and my CPU uh, block was pretty much the same. Uh, and, and that's something I experienced before with Thermaltake opaque coolant as well. Now, not the white C1000 coolant in particular. Um, this one I haven't actually tested yet, uh, but the blue C1000 coolant from Thermaltake basically clogged everything in my system. So I haven't had any luck yet with opaque coolants and that's kind of what you get when you add something other than just distilled water, which is the go-to, it's an easy solution and you're not gonna have many issues uh, at all really when it comes to clogs and to stains, because again, you have no additives in there save maybe something to prevent uh, algae growth, which you certainly don't want in any custom loop of yours. Uh, so take this video for what it is, Stay away from opaque coolants if you're afraid of routine maintenance. Um, in, in my personal opinion, I don't think that the amount of work that goes into maintaining an opaque fluid uh, justifies how much better it might look in a system. So, you know, having an opaque coolant like white, red, blue looks great for a short while, but I guarantee you're gonna hate tearing everything apart and cleaning it when the time comes, especially when you notice your temperatures start to spike, which means that your entire loop is clogging, likely as a result of the additives in the fluid to make it opaque. If you like this video, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite. You can click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. You could sponsor us as well by clicking the button right next to it for added perks and live streams, comment sections, access to our free Discord channel, uh, and everything else linked down below in the video description. This is Cyan Studio. Thanks for cleaning with us.